Hi, so in previous session we have discussed about uh, uh, the innate immune responses against uh, viruses and how the viruses evade the innate immunity. Now let us move to the uh, adaptive immunity. So in, in this session we will discuss about uh, what are the adaptive immune responses are uh, there against uh, virus infection and you, you understand that uh, this, this response is very important uh, uh, not only infection, uh, it is also very much important during vaccination. So the whole principle of vaccination is uh, basically based on uh, activation of adaptive immunity. Okay? So if we if we elicitate appropriate uh, adaptive immune, immune response against uh, uh, any virus or viral component, then that uh, response is capable to clear the real virus infection. So, let us begin with uh, adaptive immunity. So, you know that uh, there are two major component of uh, adaptive immunity. One is uh, uh, antibody production and another is T cell activation. Okay. So, let us uh, begin with uh, antibody component. So, as you know that when there is a virus infection, there is a uh, uh, production of uh, virus specific uh, or activation of virus specific uh, B cells. Okay. And these B cells, uh, it is not only one B cell, there are repertoire of B cells. Okay? There is a huge array of B cells which is uh, getting activated uh, during the virus infection. So, these were these B cells differentiate into uh, two major component. One is uh, the effector cell which is mainly the plasma cell which secretes the antibody. Okay? and another is memory cell. So, this memory cells are playing very important role when there is a reinfection of uh, uh, same viruses. Okay? And these memory cells are also playing very important, very much important role uh, during uh, vaccination. Okay? So, when the individual receives the vaccine, basically we are trying to induce this memory B cells. Okay? Uh, so that when there will be a real infection, so these memory cells will differentiate into again effector cell and uh, then that will produce a, a lot of uh, antibodies and these antibodies will uh, clear the real viral infection. Okay? So now let us look at how these antibodies are playing a uh, role uh, against uh, viruses. Okay? So, so viruses are when, when they infect the host, uh, generally they are present in two forms, mainly present in two forms. One is that this virus is, is present in free form, okay, outside the cell. Okay. So, when it is present in free form, then what will happen if there is a uh, antibody against these uh, viruses? So, these antibodies basically mask the the surface protein on uh, on the viruses and there will be a two major benefits of this one is that uh, uh, you know that viruses uses some surface protein in order to attach with the host cell okay so if that surface is masked by the antibody then these viruses cannot attach to the target cell and these antibodies we call it as a neutralizing antibody. Okay? There are some protein which is uh, not playing very important role in, in, uh, in attachment with the target cell. Okay? So, there is a also generation of antibody against those surfaces. Okay? We, we call those, pro, uh, those, uh, those uh, surfaces or the antibody which is generated against those surfaces as a non-neutralizing antibody. Okay? So, both this neutralizing antibody is playing very important role in preventing the infection. Okay? 
whereas this non neutralizing antibody they play a very important role in in various processes okay various immune processes the first is okay this virus is uh, uh, coated with the antibody then what will happen this will be readily phagocytosed by the phagocytic cells okay another is if the uh, if the virus is uh, uh, coated with uh, uh, antibody then there is a activation of complement mediated pathway you know you remember that classical uh, uh, complement pathway this classical complement pathway uh, is basically triggered by antigen uh, antigen antibody interaction okay and uh, you, you you remember that uh, there is a uh, ch2 domain uh, in fc part of the igg this interacts with uh, uh, C1Q, okay, and then that will activate the cascade of complement pathway, and that eventually result to the uh, 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 um, formation of membrane attack complex. So these complement pathways are very important against uh, enveloped virus. Okay, there are there are non-enveloped virus, but these uh, these uh, these antibodies uh, or these complement pathway or uh, complement pathway which is basically triggered by antibody that is classical pathway plays a very important role against enveloped virus. So, there will be a formation of pore and then there will be a uh, loss of uh, osmolarity and all those things and then eventually this virus will be disintegrated. Okay. Another situation is okay virus is present in free state another could be these viruses are infected the cell already infected the cell so uh, over there some viral signatures will be present over the uh, infect, uh, infected cells okay and these uh, if if these viral signatures are present uh, on infected cell then you know that there is a several phenomena uh, are playing very important role one if you remember there is a ADCC, okay, antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. So, that will happen, okay. So, the infected, uh, uh, there will be a lysis of uh, infected cell, okay, uh, through ADCC. There could be a inhibition of a viral replication, okay. So, uh, this is this is basically uh, taking place. Uh, through various cell signaling okay so so uh, when antibody will bind to these uh, virally infected cells then that will change some cell signaling and then that will result to the inhibition of a uh, viral replication okay uh, and if you if you remember that there is a one very important uh, family of cytokine that is type 1 and type 3 interferon they are also doing uh, same job okay inhibition of uh, viral release okay so uh, there is a possibility that uh, if uh, the antibody is generated against the uh, virus and this the, and it will be displayed over the uh, surface of cell then they, they, there is a possibility that they, this will inhibit the virus release from infected cells okay and if there is an inhibition of uh, uh, release of virus from infected cell then there will be a decrease in transmission of virus okay decrease in transmission of virus through cell cell uh, transmission okay so when the virus is released from one cell it will infect another healthy cell okay so this if the virus release is inhibited then transmission will be also inhibited so in that way these antibodies plays a very very important role against virus infection now let us uh, look at the T cells ok. So you know there are variety of uh, T cells and these T cells are playing very important role uh, during any infection. In particular in during virus infection uh, let us look at what are the function and how they play a antiviral state, uh, how they develop the antiviral state uh, during virus infection ok. So, here you can see that there is a CD8 T cells ok. The CD8 T cells also we call it as a cytotoxic T cells ok. 
So, these cytotoxic T cells basically recognizes the ant viral antigen along with MHC class 1 molecule. Okay. Okay. After recognition, uh, please note that there is a need of co-stimulation which is provided by the, the, uh, the infected cell and uh, this, this uh, co-stimulatory signal is received by cytotoxic T cell, then there will be a fruitful activation of cytotoxic T cells. Okay. So, once it is recognized, then what will happen? There will be a direct cytolysis uh, of uh, infected cell. Okay. You know that this will release some granules. Okay. Uh, the granules will be exocytosed, uh, which is mainly consist of uh, perforin and uh, granzyme. Okay. And perforin and granzyme is a basically serine proteases. Okay. And these, this these granules will reach in the target cell and that will cause the lysis of a target cell. Okay? There will be a, uh, uh, also the CD8 or cytotoxic T cells will also have a FAS ligand. Okay? And uh, this FAS ligand and there will be a FAS over the uh, target cell and this interaction will cause the release of uh, some cytokine and it may also cause the apoptosis of target cell. Okay? It will also induce the activation cytokine, for example, production of interferon gamma. Okay? There will be a production of TNF alpha and some another chemokines. Okay? So, these are the key uh, uh, antiviral role of cytotoxic T cell. Another is a CD4 T cells and CD4 T cells, you know, there are several subtypes that is TH1, TH2, TH17 and so on. So, okay, there are TH9, Treg and all those things. Okay. So, basically, cyto, uh, this uh, T helper cell, we also call CD4 T cell as a T helper cells. Okay. So, these T helper cells, uh, uh, the uh, T helper cell also we call it as a TH1, TH2, TH. 17 or th9 okay so this th1 cells plays a very important role uh, uh, after recognition of uh, uh, the mhc class 2 molecule which is uh, present over the cell along with the antigen so this will be recognized by cd4 t cells and then that will induce the uh, production of uh, uh, cytokine okay like interferon gamma il12 okay and uh, they will also induce some uh, some chemokines okay so basically th1 cells play important role during intracellular uh, uh, pathogen infection or microbial infection however the th2 cells they play a very important role during virus infection they basically stimulate the antibody production okay uh, through the production of il4 IL-5 and IL-13. Okay. There is a TH-17 cells. These uh, TH-17 cells are playing very important role in inducing some kind of inflammation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, its role in virus infection is not uh, uh, very well clear, but uh, they do play an important role uh, in, in, in direct or indirect way. Basically, they, they induce the inflammation. Okay. So, maybe it is playing very important role in triggering the alarm when there is a virus infection okay, in the host. So, that the immune cells will come at the site of infection and they will take care of that infection. Okay. So, here you, just I would like to say that there is a, uh, some, uh, some cytokine which is anti-inflammatory in nature and these cytokine basically damp the uh, cytotoxic T cell activity and here you can see that there is a IL-10 okay? and these IL-10 uh, damps the CD8 T cell responses. Okay? So, there are uh, uh, the hallmark of uh, adaptive immunity is the memory. So, our adaptive immune system remember the infection and when there is a reinfection, this this uh, this will trigger the all uh, uh, all all those molecules the synthesis of all those molecules very quickly and clear the second infection okay 
सो मेमोरी बी एंड टी सेल्स आर जनरेटेड आफ्टर इन्फेक्शन और वैक्सीनेशन आर जनरली लॉन्ग लिव्ड ओके इट्स इट्स यू यू मे नो दैट यू मे रिसीव सम वैक्सीन वेन यू आर किड ओके सो this vaccine is still working because there is a memory inside our body if there is an infection then this will clear the infection okay and you will not know that thing okay so there are several factors which maintains this uh, uh, this memory and there is a one cytokine which we call it as a buff okay b cell activating factor okay so this this cytokine may play a very important role in maintaining the b cell memory okay uh, which basically uh, helps in formation of memory as well as duration of keeping this memory okay however it uh, what is the molecular precise molecular mechanism of uh, maintaining this memory is not so uh, well understood okay uh, however this uh, this uh, there are some some or there are some theory that okay there will be a, a slow proliferation of these memory cell and that memory cell will just uh, present throughout the uh, the the duration okay so the b cell memory is uh, uh, there are uh, uh, we we call it as a based on duration we call it as a long term memory or this long term memory is basically uh, the, the there are two major principle which which uh, people suggested that uh, one is that the repeated exposure to the antigen okay so if the individual will receive the antigen keep on receiving the antigen a small amount of antigen then that will maintain the memory okay and if you Uh, if you remember that uh, you have received the vaccine okay you received first dose and second dose and then preventive dose okay so this this uh, this re receiving of these the second dose and the preventive dose the aim is to maintain the memory okay so if we don't give this uh, uh, this uh, uh, second dose and or preventive dose then uh, maybe we will lose the memory we will lose the information how to uh, fight with the uh, sars cov2 okay so this is a just one example okay there is a repeated exposure so we are giving again and again the same antigen so that our body the memory will remain intact okay there is a uh, another uh, theory uh, another school of thought that uh, there is a pre existing serum and uh, tissue high affinity uh, class switched antibody to virus and probably from long lived uh, plasma cell in the bone marrow okay so uh, there is a uh, one theory that uh, there is a some long lived plasma cells are present in the bone marrow and that maintains the memory but uh, Uh, to best of my understanding it depends on antigen it's not uh, only depends on uh, uh, the b cell or uh, other factors it depends on antigen you you may know that uh, uh, for some some infection for example the smallpox we have a almost lifelong memory okay but for sars cov2 if you take the example we don't have a that long memory okay so for for antigen to antigen there will be a uh, uh, various uh, uh, various uh, mechanism most probably various mechanism is, uh, are existing in the host okay so long lived plasma cell basically secrete uh, uh, very high affinity antibody is a uh, long lived and survive without cell division so this plasma cell they sit in the bone marrow and then they just sit uh, over there they don't divide okay so since they are not dividing so they will not age so fast and they will not removed from the system okay and in that way this will this will provide a uh, memory for many many years okay and uh, the uh, it will maintain the antibody level in the blood serum okay there is a antigen independent or bystander uh, uh, activation so 
there is uh, some theory that uh, some memory is antigen independent. Okay, so uh, so these are uh, some of the theories. Here I will just uh, talk about the short-lived plasma cells. Uh, basically survive for only few days. Uh, so, in general the plasma cells survive for very short duration and produce antibody in uh, extra follicular foci and probably crucial in the very early response to the pathogen. Okay? So, so this, is, uh, 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 this is about the short lived plasma cell which, which will be short lived and in this short duration they will produce tons amount of antibody in order to control the infection okay, or viral, uh, viral replication. There are some uh, studies, people perform some studies in order to understand the memory. In Sweden, uh, people perform, uh, you know that uh, people received this inactivated uh, uh, polio virus vaccine, okay, vaccine against the polio virus. And they showed that uh, there, will, there is a, a substantial anti-polio antibody tighter in all age group. Okay? So, so, this shows that uh, this memory is existing and this memory, uh, but we do not know what is the molecular mechanism. Okay? But this memory is present for very long time in all, uh, all age group people, okay? suggesting that the, uh, the maintenance of antibody tighter over decades in the absence of further vaccination or exposure to the live virus. Okay? So, this is without uh, repeated exposure to the antigen, it is unlike the SARS-CoV-2. Okay? Here, the host receives only once the vaccine and then they develop the antibody and this antibody levels are maintained. But it is not true for uh, uh, other antigen like tetanus and diphtheria, antibody titer decline very quickly. And if you take the case of SARS-CoV-2, this is also true for SARS-CoV-2, the antibody uh, uh, titers are declining. Okay? Another study, uh, this is a smallpox vaccine uh, using vaccinia virus. So, memory B cells show a drop from peak response occur uh, at vaccination to an approximately 10 year time point. Okay? But a stable level was seen uh, uh, between the 10 to 60 years okay? and serum antibody response could be identified at 60 to 75 years after vaccination. So, it, this suggests that okay, so there will be a peak of uh, antibody response and then it will be stable for 10 to uh, 60 years and then there is a, uh, uh, th there will be a, some reduction in this uh, uh, antibody titer. Okay? But the reduction is not so uh, drastic, it, it will be there, but uh, uh, the reduction is not too much uh, low. Okay? So, it is possible that uh, as I told you previously, there must be multiple mechanism depends on antigen, depends on host and there must be some various kind of uh, phenomena is, uh, is going on in our uh, body or in the host and mm, there could be a possibility that okay, these, this memory is uh, basically uh, somehow renewed, uh, somehow they transfer the information when, when they die to the healthy cells. Okay? So, we do not know precisely what is the molecular mechanism. So, humoral response to the acute viral infection in human, here you can see that uh, the, the persistence of antibody, again this is the matter of uh, uh, memory uh, or antibody present against particular infection. Here you can see that chikungunya can induce memory for 30 years, it is very long. Okay? And here you can see that yellow fever, yellow fever vaccine they can induce the memory for 75 years, which is a almost life span of human. Okay? But for some cases uh, like uh, uh, coronavirus, it is very short, it is about 12 months, it, after that it will decline. Influenza virus is again 30 months and RSV, respiratory synchitial virus, it induces uh, only 3 month memory. Okay? So, this is a quite variable here, I, I want to say that. Okay? 
T cell memory. So, activated naive T cells basically differentiate into the effector T cell and memory T cell. Okay, and uh, there is a just uh, difference in expression of uh, CD45. Okay, this is a one surface molecule. There must be some more molecule, but uh, uh, just for your uh, simplicity and or for simple understanding. I am just telling one molecule, it is CD45. There is a difference in CD45 molecule. And effector T cell uh, has a higher frequency and their lower activation threshold to trigger the proliferation and uh, differentiation. So, uh, at very less stimulation, they can produce a lot of effector cell and then that, that will control the infection. Okay. Whereas, this memory T cell can uh, also rapidly express effector activity uh, that is uh, production of pro-inflammatory cytokine, antiviral cytokine like uh, uh, interferon gamma, TNF alpha within an hour after TCR engagement on, on these T cells without uh, uh, DNA synthesis. Okay? And there will be additional proliferation in these cells. Okay? And naive T cells uh, activation and proliferation and memory T cell population formation maintenance uh, are controlled by, uh, uh, there are several cytokine as you can see there are IL-2, IL-7 and IL-15. So, they are playing very important role in, in this naive T cell activation. Okay? IL-15 dependent and long term memory T cell viability uh, basically is uh, supported by IL-7, which upregulate, sustain the expression of anti-apoptotic BCL2, anti-apoptotic gene BCL2 and, uh, uh, and it is develop, uh, developing to the memory T cells. Okay? So, memory CD8 positive T cell differentiation. So, at the peak of uh, uh, CD8 positive T cell response, naive T cell expression, uh, expansion lead to two distinct subset. One is that, as I told you, there will be a short-lived effector cells and there will be a, a memory precursor effector cells. Okay? And these memory CD8 T cells uh, further differentiate into self-renewal uh, memory T cell and the extended lifespan depends on uh, partly on IL-7, IL-15 dependent homeostatic proliferation having a slow cell division and minimal cell number uh, cell number changes okay so with this i will uh, i will stop uh, about the adaptive immune responses against uh, uh, virus infection in next session i will talk about how the viruses evade this adaptive immunity and establish the infection thank you